and it's got duck shit on it and it's a piece of wood and the track is going in the background and we're just going to make up a random song I'm just showing Papa Joe that if you hold this board, if you hold it there you get this sound the track kind of sounds cool, it's part of this uh, <laughs> this rural sound we're getting here background white noise or something but yeah yeah no it's good noise you hear that there? but if you hold it in the middle it goes us it changes eh? I was born way on down south well, my mama, hey, she told me, son, life will be hard. Take care of yourself. My daddy said, now, don't be uptight. Stand on your own two feet and learn, learn how to fight. I was born way down in a country. Yeah, keep it solid, bro. Keep it solid. Come on, Bugsy. Get up, Bugsy. Come on. Get out of there, Bugsy. Leave the rabbits. Good dog, Bugsy. Come. Leave the rabbits, Bugsy. Hey, come. Come on. Get in. Good dogs. Good dogs. Off the road, Bugsy. Get back in, Bugsy. Get it? Good boy. Good dog. Good dog. Bugsy, get him behind. Good boy. Bugsy, get him behind. Get him behind. Good boy. Bruno, come. Come on. Good dog. Good boy. Good dog, Bruno. One of the things I'm missing around here with my garden is a worm farm, and that's what I'm going to make right now. I've got that old claw bath there. We've bathed in it, we've scalded pigs in it, we've grown stuff in it, and that's going to become a worm farm. Well, that's the idea. I've got some horse poo there, seaweed, but I'm not going to use that because I don't think you use seaweed. Some mulch, and there's a whole lot of grass that's just been cut that my old ex landlord is cut today so I'm going to throw that on top first thing I'm going to do is this I'm going to clean all the stuff out of it because I don't know what's in there there's a bit of plastic there or something screws let's give it a basic clean out so I've got some coffee grounds some horse poo and some mulch and I've got it slightly raised at this end here because this is the end where the hole is I'm going to stick this bucket under here to catch my worm juice I found this on the road in the forestry once. I think it's off a beehive, I don't know, but I think it'd be a really good filter to put over the top. Otherwise, the ducks would drink all my worm juice. Hey, Poe. You reckon they'll do that? Poe's helping me today, not much. So that'll stop, hopefully, ducks getting in there. How's that look, Poe? All right? Okay, filter now. We need a filter in here so this doesn't block up with shit. Got one of these. These are, I believe, stainless, so I don't think it'll go rusty. We'll find out soon enough. I'll stick that in there like that. This is an old bit of white bait net folded in four, four bits. I'm going to put that on top of that there. And I need some stones to hold it down, I suppose. Actually, it sits there pretty good. I'm going to rob a stone from the fireplace. Look at that one there. It's flat. Perfect. Just going to put that like that there. Or maybe this end might be better. Yeah, that's better there. There's the hole down there. Cool. Right, uh, a little bit of mulch. This is actually quite big stick so that'll help it hopefully uh, filter a wee bit just a layer on the bottom cool I've never done this before and one of my mates told me you can do it with a bar so I'll give it a go I'm probably doing something wrong and I'll find it as I go along but that's how you learn it so I've got a bit of mulch in there that can filter through there, right? See that horse poo. Oh, oh cow poo apparently is okay. So we've got horse poo here. Hmm. Good stuff. Looks like we've got horse poo with some stones in it. Oh, this is actually um, quite damp. 
don't mind putting my hands in it, I'm gonna wash it anyway. And there went worms in there. Chop off that one. Oh. Now that's nice and damp. Take these plants out. Cool. It's already kind of broken down a bit. You can stay on that pace because you run away. Right, there's another bag of coffee grounds. I picked up two of these yesterday. Now I'm not sure if this is the right order it should go in, but I know that I put coffee grounds in my wasabi garden and the worms loved it. So that's what we're putting in here. It's a bit more fun to spread than horse poo. That's one. Right, we'll stick another one in. Put that one over there. And I don't know, do I put a bit of this on or a bit of green waste? What do you guys reckon? I don't know. I'm gonna take a gamble and stick one of these on. Not really sure this is the right thing to do. I'll put green waste on top of that. This is already starting to break down this old worm in it too. Look, there's a worm there. Well, that's an earthworm. Oh, no, that might be tiger worm. Nah, it's an earthworm. Put this in. There's a few worms in there, actually. But I'm going to go to my dad's house and grab some of his. Just throw one more bucket and that'll be enough. Half a bucket will do. That'll be enough because I want to put some green waste on that. Poe's just found one of my pig skins. I can see ya. What are you doing, Poe? Anybody think I don't feed you enough, eh? What you think you're doing, eh? Eh? What you got? You're chewing up a pigskin. Oh, what this can do. It's going to give you a poo with hair in it. This one's going to do. Your old tail wagon, 100 mile hour. Oh, I don't care. Heaps of it. This has all been cut today. Papa Joe is painting the hut that I got for him. Well, that's the second coat of Sickens. It's looking good. It has three coats. The last coat was done 14 days ago. It's a beautiful colour, mate. It's nice you got the stack down, too. Next thing we'll put a railing on there later on. But no, she's good. Really good. Your little home away from home. Yeah, that's the one. Are you doing well, mate? Doing bloody well. Later on when we can afford it, we're going to buy another one of those cabins or build one. So two young guys can live here. Daniel will be gone soon, so there'll be a space coming up for a young bloke that uh, wants to learn the ways of the land and the bush and the sea and the rivers and the lakes. A few hours each day. Daniel only does a couple. Some days he does nothing, other days he does five or six like today. Just uh, mostly works on stuff to provide for himself. Most of his work here has been on that hut and also in the garden. But he's also got a full time job working in the forestry, which I got him through my mate Redneck Joe. He's making good money. He's going well too, planting trees. Well, the chickens have already found my uh, stash. You guys, your trouble. Go on, where you go? Fuck off! Fuck off! I can see after I've done this, I'll need to put some carpet over it or something. This is our green waste. It's quite satisfying doing this, I've got to say. Right, we need a cover. And we need some worms. This old dog rug's probably as good as anything for a cover. That or a bit of carpet. I think that'll keep the chickens off. You go my wasabi, mate, you will end up very dead. Okay, that's not the place for you. Normally, when this is happening, you go into the chopping block, be warned, keep away from the wasabi. It's worth more than your life. There you go. Stay there. Little poe into her skin. Good old chew. So what are these? Are these uh, tiger worms or normal worms? No, I don't think they're called tiger worms, but they're sold specifically for worm farms. Right. And okay. That'll be enough to get me going. They'll breed, oh, won't they? Yeah. Yeah, that's, Gosh, that's, that's, yes. that's good. And this is all their casings, well, is it? This, their uh, ca this, this is all the dirt that they've yeah. created. It's kind of yeah. a sticky stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Worm casings. Um, 
when I when I bought these, yeah. I, I got a little container like this. Yeah. So about I don't know a tenth of what you've got here. Right. To start me off. Well, they're probably breeding right now as we look at them, aren't they? Oh yeah, probably. Yeah, they've got they're doing a bit of breeding. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. So you got what two oh. layers? So that's your compost and stuff in there. That's the, just what I feed them on. So is there anything that doesn't go in there that they don't eat? Yeah, no citrus, no onion. Right, okay. Yeah. Ah. But it is, you know, it's pretty well covered. There's not much rain gets through those little air holes. No, so that's the only moisture's in there is what, what comes in there. But I give them there. a little sprinkle with the hose if they're getting oh, a yeah. bit dry. Okay. Yeah, but and I wouldn't leave them in heavy rain because they'd drown. And that's your worm juice in the bottom? Yeah. Cool, and is it a good fertiliser? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. That's really cool. So what's in the second layer then? Just dirt, is it? This is the stuff that they've the casings. eaten. The casings. And oh, yeah. So that's ready to empty and put into the garden. So that acts as a yeah. fertiliser. Yeah. Good information. Thank you. Enjoy it. Don't think you're going to be eating some of my worms, Ducky. No, they're not for you, mate. Oh, don't drink that shit water pace. You the green bloody slimy ducky shitty stuff. Oh yeah. Let's uh, release the worms into it. Gee. Oops. I say thanks to my my mum and dad for these. Heaps of them. You guys are gonna get some really nice tucker in here. Got lots of coffee grounds and oh, all that good stuff. Gonna love your new life. It's gonna cover them up. Yeah, they all go. I know that they like coffee grounds. Put that on. Hopefully, they all breed in there. We get a nice worm population. Grass on top. Might put a sprinkle of water over that too. If it's not that wet, it can wet down a bit more. That was the original bath in this house, and we had quite a few baths in it. Nice old claw bath, but uh, she need a lot of work to get it back to a decent state to, to bath in again. So this is a good job. It's done many things. This bath scolded a lot of pigs in it. That's for sure. Pace and po. Playing hide and go seek. Poe's trying to find him and Pace is hiding down here, look. He's just there. And he's like, go, oh, I'm here, sucker. Get in, Pace! Right, this old blanket's going to be a uh, cover to keep chickens off, ducks out, and also the sunlight away from the worms. It's a bit like making a bed, really, isn't it? Chickens that love to get into this, pick all those worms, so we want to keep them out of here. Most of the time they're in the chicken coop, but a few get out. Well, pa and Pace having a good play this evening. Looks pretty good. What are you doing, Pace? Hey? Oh, Papa Joe's up there. Yo, yo. You cooking dinner, mate? Yeah, that's the one, yeah. Oh, yeah. Give us a bit of wood down. Nice gun, mate. Yeah, mate. Beauty. There's a cracker too. That's a beauty. Is that your first today? Yeah. Nice going. <laughs> There's a couple more rising. You come down at the right time. Nice going. Yeah, that's a good fish, bud. I saw you smack that, you caught it nicely, eh? Yeah. Yeah, that's a cracker, you got the right lure on too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect time. The uh, old one sneaking in, so it's good. I'd normally come down my rod and I'd book in the back of my car and I left it behind. I was going to come down and fish myself, I left it at home. That's good going, that's yeah. a good fish. Yeah. Yeah. No, I got a snag just before and like probably second or third cast. Yeah, I saw that one hit you, I was watching you, I saw it hit you, I was like smack. Yeah, good going. Yeah, you got him. Very good. Very good gun. Oh, well done, lads. Yeah, thank you. Is 
This is Grossy Point, Mapua. Place I keep coming back to all the time. Provides us with fish. Place to swim in the summertime. Exercise. Walk our dogs. It's just beautiful. It really is. Place outside. Mm. 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 You alright mate? You okay? Let's untie this rope, eh? Let's take this off you. Me? Mm. You okay, boy? It's okay, boy. Mm. You okay, mate? How are we doing today, eh? You gonna better get up? You're not too bad. Get out of there, Pace. Pace, get out of there. Knock him over. Bruno, get off my trees. Oh no. Snaps everything. Okay. He's just about broken everyone. I've got to fix him up. For some reason, he has to pee right where they are. Good boy. Come on, Bruno, out of there. Bruno, out of there. Good boy. Good dog. That's your good boy. Actually not so bad as I was expecting. He could get up this morning. Yesterday he couldn't. No? Not so bad this morning, are you? Your blanket's coming to bits. That was a rough night. Toothache. Feels like it's earache and toothache now. I'm not going to grizzle about it that much, but jeez. I, I think I probably slept for about 10 minutes if I was lucky. And took some painkillers as you do. But uh, some painkillers just don't really work, do they? I took uh, paracetamol with codeine, which normally is good. You mix them up together. That's what I would normally take for pain, or I take CBD oil. I've got some uh, cannabis oil that this uh, witch that lives on the Taka Hill gave me, but it's not the really, it's the really potent stuff that you get stoned on it, and I'm not under being stoned. It, it is good for pain, but get up, B. So I called the dentist this morning. They opened at 8 o'clock, but see they did, and uh, only for emergency services you can call us back at 9 or leave a message. So I said, well, I don't really know if it's an emergency or not, but I know that I haven't slept much in the last four days. Yesterday I did like a whole lot of bags of manure. I've got some more horseship from my worm farm there, and also stacked some firewood, a whole lot of firewood. I noticed, geez, my heart was like palpitating like fuck. Heal up, B. I thought, maybe that's because I've got this infection I'm fighting, and I was sweating like a bloody... I won't say that. You know what I'm sweating like. <laughs> when most people will look at, say, this dog Poe here, they see a dog. Just a dog. But when I see Poe, I don't, I don't see just a dog. I see a whole lot of memories. Hundreds of memories. I see the time I carried her out on her first ball when she got ripped up. And I was not sure if she was going to make it. I see the time she bailed up a hell of a boar and I walked for miles and miles and she stayed with it all day and eventually we lost it and she came back full of holes and I took her to the vet. I think of the countless amount of pigs she got, hey pigsy, that were just small eating pigs that we, we ate from. She's caught hundreds of pigs. I think of the times with the young guys, the hunts with Smash, with Cuzzy, with Jaunty, with Spencer, with Knuckles, with Nails, with Jody. Simon. The list just goes on and on. There's just so many more people that she's hunted with. Haven't you, mate? All the young fellas that learnt how to stick a pig. Daniel got his first pig with Poe. So, she's not just a dog to me. That's what I think we do with all our dogs. We have these, these fond memories. But with our hunting dogs, it goes a bit further than just a pet. I mean, pets, we have good memories, and they're valid too, but with our hunting dogs, we often had situations where they they were maybe not going to make it. We almost lost them and then we had to really work hard. We had to carry them somewhere or we waited here, the vet, they're going to be okay. Because they live dangerous lives. They live on the edge. Like they're supposed to live, like wolves. That's how wolves are supposed to live. They fight for food. And they bring the food back to uh, us. So we love them a little bit differently to how we might love a pet, I think. I think it's because they also sustain us. So they, 
they have something else, another meaning that you don't quite get with a uh, just a normal pet dog. And I've had pet dogs before too. And they're loved just as much, but just loved differently. Hey, Po. So many stories we could tell. Hey. Eh? So many places we've been. And she's going grey now. She's getting old. Po, I bought her for $500 off my mate Kim. Actually belonged to Kim's husband, Stephen. And she was about 13 months and she was already catching pigs then. She had a period where it took her a while to find her feet. Speaking of her feet, look at the size of her feet compared to the rest of them. They're huge. She's got those big, almost like hunterway feet. Massive feet. And there's her offspring right there. And there goes the proud dad watching the whole thing down there. Well, we think he's the dad. We're not 100% sure. He wasn't supposed to be the dad because uh, he was in this cage here. And he bent this out and opened it right up. B can't get out of it, but Pace can. He bent it up, come home, and there was Pace having a cigarette in the corner and Poe licking the fanny. Something had gone down. And he's the, he's the prodigy, aren't you, mate? And a really good dog. Our dogs uh, connect to us in a very deep way when they're hunting dogs. Poe, in your box. Get up, girl. They've just had a walk and a feed. What about Bruno? You stay there, Poe. She'll probably let herself out again. Well, Bruno, other than being the logo of our channel, he's my mate through and through. He's the guard dog. I've had him since he was a puppy. Raised him as a puppy. Sat beside me in the truck. Hunted him for quite a few years as a rope dog. And now, well, he's in his final days. He spends most of his time on the porch. Aren't you, Bruno, eh? He can't really sit up very well. Good boy. Different one here. He's a good boy, eh? Oh, Poe, you're already out again. You let yourself out, okay? That's okay, mate. Hey, Bruno. Now, Bruno is a special dog. Pure Dogo Argentino, of course. And he's not like other Dogos that I've had. He's a lot more, he's less aggressive. He guards when he has to, but really, come on, boy. He's struggling, you see, just to get up to his back feet. There's a boy. Come on. There's a good dog, eh? You good boy? That's a good dog. That's a good boy, Bruno. That's a good dog. Yes, Poe, you're a good girl too. Good boy. Sit down, Pace. Start making a bloody fight. Sit down, Pace. Pace just wants to hunt. Hey, Bruno. Good boy. That's a good dog. That's a good boy. You're a good boy, okay? Don't lick me. No, I don't want that. No, nah, I don't want that. Yes, I'm really, really, really dreading the day. I'll have to put him down. Pace, sit down. Calm down, Pace. It's not too long before that day is going to come now, I think. He slows down a lot. Sit down, Pace. I actually sh I shed a tear last night. I was thinking, shit, I know the reality of the job that lies ahead of me, and uh, that'll be one of the hardest dogs I've ever had to put down. But I won't let him suffer. And when he can no longer walk... And his functions aren't working properly, he can't go toward it properly, and he's obviously in pain. That uh, moment will come. Just found this in the post from number one good bastard, Stu Driver. Awesome, I think it's wasabi. Happy days, I've been waiting for this for ages. I've already got the place to plant it. This here is the last lot of wasabi that Stu sent me, and it's doing really well. I come out at night and pick the slugs off. You can see the slugs have won the battle in places. This is the original wasabi that he sent me. You can see it's flowering, and I'll be getting seed off it, and it's away. Some of these plants here are three years old. It's really going for it. And I can see a weed in there, and when I can see a weed, what I do is I just hunt it down like this. But it's coming out. You can go, that's not wasabi. And you can see that these little seeds pods starting to come up. So we'll be seeding our own, but I'm pretty sure that this is wasabi plant here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put it in this bowl of water. Now I said before they come from Walmart, of course I was tripping, I was telling a tall story, they come from Kmart, we don't have Walmart in New Zealand, not that I know of. So I'm going to crank this open, and I'm hopeful that this is actually wasabi, and then I'm going to put it in water overnight before I plant it out. Because they need a lot of water, and we'll just let them soak. Yeah! Pretty exciting, that's right. Hmm, you smell it, can you? Oh, 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 oh. oh, look at this pace. Yeah, oh, beauty. Beauty. 
Absolute beauty. Oh, Stu, you ripper. Look at this. Oh, man. He is such a good bastard. He is the number one good bastard. These plants mean so much to me. Pace, get out of there. It was a bloke that was going to sell me some. Uh, he's got the uh, business in Christchurch there, and he was going to charge me like $15. I was happy to pay that for it, but he billed me before I got the wasabi. So I said, well, we really need to have it first, mate. Oh, look at this. Look at this. There's heaps. Oh, this is great. Stu, you are the number one good bastard, man. This is this means a hell of a lot to me. This is the best gift you could really give me is wasabi because I'm so passionate about growing this plant. I really am. Before I plant them out, I'm just going to soak them in water overnight because I've been in the post in a bag for I don't know how long and uh, let them get a bit of water on them. We'll keep them nice and wet. How you doing? I hope you're doing better than me. I've got a bloody toothache and it's been driving me bananas. The last five days I've had this massive headache on this side of my head and it's like hot and I can't sleep and tried to get to the dentist and under level three, couldn't go. Well, whew, that was good. That was really good. <laughs> I went to Steph Wills dentist here in Motawaika, I actually normally go to the one in Salisbury Road in Richmond where I normally go, but this was closer and it was good. So what I found out was they can't do a lot of stuff like tearing teeth out in surgery at level 3, they're actually quite restricted. She x-rayed it, found out yes the tooth is infected and there's all this gooey horrible shit down the back so she poked around there and did the old squirty thing with the cold air that makes you go fuck and you just don't do anything because you try to act like you're a brave man, you just go like this. And then you do this with your body, like, just to show them, I'm fucking hurting. And she's like, she's really cool. And then she puts this thing on where she's testing to see if the nerves are alive on each tooth. And you hold the end of it to create a circuit. And that gives you pain. And I said, oh, I've never had one of those before. And she goes, oh, we're always thinking of new ways to torture you guys. <laughs> anyway. I've always used this stuff. That was actually uh, her, one of her dentists that worked there, yeah, Matt, that put me onto this stuff originally. And it's really, really good for infection in your mouth. You don't use it too long because it can actually cause plaque, if that makes any sense. Don't ask me why, but it does. I already had some, but I've just bought some more. And another really good toothpaste that I use is this one here, which they also put me onto a long time ago. So she said she was going to prescribe me antibiotics. I fucking hate antibiotics. Not because it, it's any problem to take them, and they can save your life. They, they, they knock infection out but they also destroy the flora of your gut and it can take a long time to get it back and you need that gut health for everything else to function well so when you take antibiotics it can fuck it up i'm not saying don't take antibiotics i'm just saying i don't like taking antibiotics for that reason there's adverse effects so i said do i really have to take antibiotics and she said most probably you will but first of all try this and she gave me these little things to go to my teeth like a dental floss but with a fat bit in the, in the middle it's like these here and what it is, is uh, it's like your normal floss, and then it gets fatter. So what I've done is I've dipped it in that stuff, and I've floss behind the teeth. So we're going to try three or four days the approach of trying to just knock the infection out with good diet, try to get good sleep, and regular flushes with this stuff here. And if it doesn't work, then we'll start taking the antibiotics as a last resort. And then we go to level two, we can find out whether um, the tooth needs to... We'll see how it goes. Probably in all honesty it needs to come out eventually, but uh, I haven't got a tooth on the other side, this is the only side to chew. The other thing she did was, she said, oh the bite's not right, you, you've got a big, you've made a big hole and that's also causing pressure on it. So she's ground the tooth down on the top and the bite feels a lot better already, so that was also something that was going wrong there. So I think uh, combined with that, we might have some joy, we might not, we'll see how we go. Anyway, watch the space. What I did buy was in the shops was uh, I'm doing these meals right now for um, for under five dollars and I'll show you the very top one meals for students because my daughter's a student I thought about making something up for her I don't know if it's going to focus on there or not um, maybe not you see the price here the top one so I bought these mussels two dollars and five cents the feed of mussels that's today's meal for two dollars and we'll try and find some plant along the way maybe I can find some watercress on the way home or something so I'm trying to 
do these videos where I'm making my own meal each day under five dollars not because I'm poor and can't afford it, because I can afford to pay over five dollars, thanks patrons, but because I want to showcase to those who are either a bit hard up, or like my daughter who's a student who really, they struggle just to, to pay for the basic uh, essential items, this is something I'm doing, so watch that space. We'll see if we can find some tucker on the way home on the side of the road. That's where I normally get my watercress from, but we've had a lot of rain and it's been washed almost out. So we'll have to find something else. Our uh, green lip mussels back home. Right, got some water boiling on here, on the stove. We're just gonna smash them straight in there. Let them open up. New Zealand, 100% barn raised. But check out the price for three large chicken frames. We can make a lot of soup out of that. That's a lot of chomping and chewing for just like $2. We're not cooking duck today, so you're in luck. What are you doing there? Pace on me firewood. That's actually rata, that native. And the rest is just stuff I chopped down. Get our fire cranking a bit more, eh, Pace? Yeah? Can you get it going? Hmm? Good boy. Actually, that wasn't for you, mate. No, sorry, that was for me. Okay. Hey Pace, that's my wood. Fetch it here. Come on, fetch it here. Well, I haven't taught you that, Commander, have I? Hey, that's mine. Leave that alone. Bloody thief. I want to get this fire cranking. As you can see, I've got a pot on the stove now with some water on it. Oh, she's putting out some heat. I'm gonna be liberal with the salt, and let's say cost of the salt, oh, be lucky if there's five cents there, we'll call it five cents, be less than that. Other side, plenty of it. How's that water doing? Oh, she's boiling, good. And how about our mussels, how are they looking? Well, I think they're done, they're all open up, they're good. Are they all open? No, oh, that one there still got to pop open. No, they're pretty good, I reckon they're just ready to come out. Okay, we'll do those, but let's get our chicken in the pot. Jeez, we're gonna be poking it to get three in there. I think we're gonna have to cut that one. That's a bit better. Right, let's let that do its thing. Here goes our entree, and straight into there. How good does that look? Oh. Right, let this cool off. Before we tear into our chicken soup, I want to see how Arb's doing. He's here today working on the little cabin we bought for Daniel. As you can tell, it's windy airs out here, like super windy. And we're already concerned it was flapping around. They need to be built with more structure around them to hold the, the roof on where the veranda is. So Arb's on that job today. And I want to see how he's getting on with it. Gee, she's windy, bro. It is windy. This oh. is a big overhang. Considering it was flapping loose. It was flapping, yeah. Do you think that they should be always secured, or just because we're in high wind area? Well, look. If you were to go for this kind of overhang, these bits of timber would be on their edge, at least, or they would have an outrigger going back, right, to strengthen it. But really. For a high wind area, this is too big an overhang 900 unsupported. Right. It's really, we're in a very high wind area here. Yeah. So um, it just flaps, you know, as as you know. Flapping. Yep. So, that's just basically a support. Right. It's attached top and bottom. It's not holding it up more as much as it's holding it down. Right. You know, against uplift. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, this was the way we built our houses in Cairns because of our cyclones. Right. You know, the wind. So we had to hold it up as much as you had to hold it down or hold yep. it down as much as you had to hold it up. So yeah, that's what this will do. I mean, two by, four by two, it's um, super strong for what it's doing, but it's just, it'll yep. stop that noise. 
Yeah. The flapping. What's that flapping up there? Is it the... Oh, that's probably that paper. It's still flapping up. You can hear it, eh? Yeah. You can hear pace barking. Oh, there's people down the front here. Oh, yeah. It's being a guard dog. Oh, okay. Those bugle batten screws make life easy, don't they? They're so fast to work with. Yeah, they're strong. You know, they used to say to us a four inch nail. Yeah. If you bang it between two pieces of timber. So it was four mils thick in the old days, would hold a ton in shear. A four inch nail would? Yeah, hold a ton. So when we'd do temporary scaffolding, we'd nail a plate onto a stud and we'd put a plank on it. So one nail would hold a ton. So you imagine what these six mil three yeah. screws hold, you know? Heaps. They've probably got a whole ton and a half because they're threaded as well. So you put two of them in and there's yep. three tons. There's bigger ones too, eh? Oh, hell yeah. There's Spax ones that I screwed the house down with. They go eight and ten mil. Yeah, well, I use Spax in that uh, composite build. Yeah, yeah. yeah, bloody good. They are, they're brilliant. They just go in easy and fast. And if you need to change anything around or yep. do something with it later on, you pull them out, you know? My whole balustrade on my house is screwed in with stainless screws. And you work with two drills, so you're not changing your... Yeah, well, this is an impact driver, so it's completely yep. different. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, this is actually a half-inch half inch. driver. Half-inch drive. Oh, yep. right. It's not a little, um, you know, the little ones that have the hex drive in it. Oh, hell, that's a bloody... This a yeah. grunty. Yeah. This is a middle one. I've got three. I've got the really big one. Well, can they go to an inch or something? Or no, no. Um, the quarter? bigger one's just got heaps more grunt. Oh, 550 yep. newton metres or something. Yeah. And um, so this one... Is uh, a bit better than the smaller ones that you kind of drill your you yeah, know, right, yeah. screws in or something like that yep. when you're doing cabinet making or something it's sort of similar. And I always drill a pilot hole. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, because it's just some of them have, you know, like they self drill, but what they don't do is they don't get the swarf out of the hole. Right. So that means that it compresses the swarf, which is the sawdust basically, the space that's made away, this cuts the fibres so it shouldn't split, right? Yeah, right. That, that sharp edge here, it cuts it them cuts, as it goes them, through, yeah. yeah. And some of them have a wobbly thread as well, like the specs do. So I've it, seen that, yeah. Yeah, so it cuts the fibres, so that's the theory behind stopping it from splitting. Right. But the fact is, when it's outside, is that you don't actually get rid of any of the sawdust that's in there, so it compresses it around there right, too. Right, yeah. And when it gets wet in there, it can make it split. I've yeah. seen self-drilling screws yeah, right, true. That split, so it's like, well, if you drill it, yeah. then it doesn't split. And I have a long series bit for when I go up to the big 150s, yeah. and I just fire it in, and it's just the easiest way to do it, you know? Yeah. Dogs. That's right, you're tied up, mate. Stay there. Good boy, Bruno. That smells absolutely delicious. It's absolutely boring, it's tits off, so we're going to turn it right down low. Not that it made much difference. Ooh, chicken soup. I'm nearly up to five bucks with the garlic and the butter, so I'm trying to keep this me under five dollars. I need something green for it that's not going to cost anything. Now, Melanie Wright wrote this and I had to punch the heart because when my subscribers teach me stuff new I fucking love it. Oh no the plant you pulled out by the yellow flowers daffodils is common mallow one of the most nutritious plants on the planet in the Middle East. It is used like we use spinach and silver beet. Supermarkets over there full of bag full bags of it. It has a deep tap root that draws minerals from the mineral rich clay. Give it a try. It's quite neutral on the palate. So easy to use with anything. Excuse my dyslexic reading. I'm not very good at reading. Right, let's go and find some of that stuff because it'll go with our chicken soup. I'm starting to get hungry thinking about it. And here it is, just like a bloody weed. And you can eat that. What, eh? Oh, we'll pick it and we'll uh, put it in the mix. Leave it with chicken soup, might even have it with our mussels. Not sure how it's going to be. There's heaps of it growing here. Well, I thought it was a weed because my ducks don't even eat it. If they don't eat it, then, uh, geez, I don't know. See how we get on with it. We have 85 cents still to spend. 
That is about 20 mils of butter, not a lot, and a couple of garlic. I'm gonna say that we're probably there about 50 to 60 cents, leaving some over, for maybe a pinch of pepper later on, and that's it, we can't spend any more. Our mussels are ready to prepare. You can see with each mussel, there's a uh, little sort of a bit of hairy bit in there. I wanna take that off. It looks like this, and it's not really edible, so it's compost. Right, there's our little knob of butter. I'm gonna put that on there. My little skillet. How's the old chicken soup doing? Ooh, smells good. Is our two cloves of garlic on top already chopped? The smell is just next level. Gonna let that garlic infuse with the butter. That's been going for about five minutes at a low heat. This is my Patreon page, and I've got to give McRae Matinga the uh, credit for this bloody good idea. For those of you who are hard up, don't forget the humble muscle for under five dollars a kilo. That's bloody cheap, isn't it? Fried in the shell with some butter and garlic, and mopped up with bread. Simply a simple yet satisfying meal. One to two people, one of my favourites. Awesome. So McCray, I've actually never bought mussels. This is the first time and I wouldn't have done it if you hadn't have put me onto it. I normally go down and harvest them just when the tide is extra low. Having gone through the process of buying them and find out for two bucks and ten cents you get eight fat mussels. It's actually really is good value, you're right. Just gonna pop this on here. Hopefully I don't crack my plate and just smash them straight in to that. Mm, look at the size of the row on that big orange rose. Mm. They've cooked in the, the pot, in the pan at least, and now straight into the, the garlic and butter. Oh shit, that smells good. Damn. Look how much you get for two bucks. Two bucks ten, look at this. I'm gonna fry up on that. You can hear the wind blowing down the chimneys. Just blowing today. Here's our, our mallow. Mallow's a funny name, isn't it? So I'm just going to get some and I'm going to put it in the pan just for something decorative. I'm sure it's going to absorb the, uh, the garlic and the butter and have some flavour to it. Probably going to go very, very small on that. It's much decorative as anything, but it's going to let that Infuse with the garlic and butter. Turn these guys over, they're nearly ready. Right, let's pop them in here. Each one has its own wee shell. You could just eat them straight out of the pan, I suppose, but this kind of looks cool. Since I'm making a video for you guys, you might appreciate that. There they go. And we've still got plenty of butter and garlic left. We can use that in our chicken soup. Let's just uh, put this right in the middle here like that. Just to be a little bit fancy. How's that look? Pretty good, eh? Oh, mate, look at this. Jeez. Holy shit, that looks good. We've still got our garlic and butter. I'm gonna use this in the chicken soup for sure. That'll be delicious. How good does that look? Hey, um, I'm salivating, I'm dribbling. This is how I broke my fast today. Thank you for everyone that's uh, given me some input onto what's going on in the channel right now. I'm gonna mention a few more of you later on, but right now I'm gonna try this. Delicious, but a little bit of pepper. I think we can afford that, can't we? Might be much. And a little bit more salt. Why didn't actually put any salt in these? They are that butter and garlic shit. Oh man. Fuck me. Oh.
sorry for being picky. Oh, shit. It's a rush. It's been actually over 24 hours because I yesterday I was struggling a bit to chew stuff, so. I can't stop eating. That is next level. Salt, pepper, garlic, butter, and eight mussels for two dollars and ten cents New Zealand. How good is that? Next time I'll be buying more. I really will. Now, oh shit! Fuck! Holy shit, that's good. Why haven't I bought them before? Do it. When I was living in Europe. My German girlfriend, Daniela Rock, and I would go out to a fancy restaurant a very occasionally because I was working all the time. But when I had a day off, would go out and she would love to buy these mussels. And we'd get these mussels in a shell about a fraction of the size of that. I can actually drink that juice. Mm -hmm. Oh, yum. A fraction of the size, about half that size, and a tiny wee wizened up mussel from somewhere in Italy. And we would pay 30 euro. For a plate which was just fuck all and that was like oh such a great delicacy to have and here in New Zealand this has got to be the best value food so far that I have found and thanks to one of my patrons telling me about it because I always go and harvest it and to be honest these actually taste better than the ones that I get down the beach they're fitter green up mussels you could eat these every day. Stop arthritis, or help with arthritis at least. They actually use them for medicine. Oh shit. I'm a bit suspicious about these weeds. I'm a little bit suspicious. Okay, Melanie. You reckon they're one of the best foods on the planet, but why don't we, we does anybody here in New Zealand eat mallow? This is my first time. Sure. Holy shit. Mmm. Right, let me tell you about that experience. That's the first time in my life I've eaten mellow. <laughs> a little bit furry, slightly. Like Boris is a little bit furry. Even, is it Boris, that plant? Borage, not <laughs> Boris. <laughs> Don't eat Boris. He's the Prime Minister of the UK. Borage. God, I'm illiterate dummy. Borage. A little bit like that, but no distinct flavour, of course what I'm tasting is the garlic and the butter. So I would sauté mallow in either onion or shallots or garlic and butter next time because that's actually really nice and it's got no other tastes and it's just a texture. I'm not going to waste one bit of that juice. I'm going to go like that. It's all going to go back into the mix. The whole lot will and that's also our salt and pepper, as much as we can get. A little bit of water. Bit of a play with that. So I want to get everything out for flavour for my chicken soup. I'm wasting nothing today, nothing at all. Good. It's been going for about, so I suppose, an hour and a half now. They call me Mellow Yellow, that's right. I'm just mad about chicken. The chicken's just mad about me. They call me Mellow Yellow, that's right. Right, this is going to be the, uh, the time consuming bit. Removing the chicken from the body of the actual frame itself. Heaps and heaps, brother.
There's our three frames without the meat on. Look at what we got here. Look at this. Seriously, look at that. How much chicken is in? That's nearly full that bowl. That's a big bowl. Right. I'm gonna put that back into here right now and back onto the heat. Holy shit, that's a lot. Here comes the mellow. There's a few uh, maybe aphids and stuff in there, might get a bit of extra protein. It smells really good, it's caramelising in this skillet here. We're just about ready now. I think we're ready to serve folks, she looks pretty damn good. Right, I haven't put salt and pepper in, because you can always uh, add it, but you can't take it out. So we'll just try this first, and see what it's like with just nothing added like this. I'm a little bit skeptical about the mallow stalks, I cut some off, I don't know if they break down or not. I'm glad I didn't put any more salt in, it's perfect. It's a winner! It's an absolute winner! Thank you Melanie for teaching me about uh, mallow. I never would have known. To be honest, I think it's not as good as silver beet or spinach. Because it has got that slight little furry bit thing going on, but other than that... Mm. It's actually very neutral, so it takes on the taste of whatever you cook it with, a bit like uh, tofu. The things I learned from my, from you guys, my subscribers, I never, I've pulled that weed out so many times and never once used it as a food source, it's a, and it a, grows in abundance here. It's a weed. This is just so good. This is my meal and I've got probably some tomorrow. All for under five bucks. It's probably, in all honesty, about four dollars fifty worth of tucker here. It's delicious. I've had an entree. If I'm lucky, I might find a strawberry out in the glass house, and that'll be dessert. So I'm making these videos while I actually start off for my daughter because she's a student. She lives on the smell of an oily rag. She always burgles my eggs and my chicken and my duck and my fish and my meat. The vegetables, everything here when she comes and takes it back, and that's that's what I love to do to give her that. But I'm making these videos so she can look and see how she can feed herself really cheaply for under five dollars a night. And this is a lot of food. Chicken frames are good value if you're a student or someone who's just a bit strapped for cash right now to put good food on the table. It's really good. And of course, at the end of it, you have a bone broth that you can use too if you don't want to make a little soup. Like I could actually can to some of this off and leave the thick stuff behind like this just into a, into a cup and like so and I've got a very, oh it looks good too how's it taste as a bone broth? it's a bone broth that's actually got all the nutrition of the mallow it's kind of a, I don't know if you can see that, the yellow can I see that without me to pick it out? oops, no, no, it's not going to work that that is a really nice bone broth it's just like chicken soup. Oh, fucking tasty, man. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give this a nine out of ten. If it was spinach and silver beet, I'd say it's a ten out of ten. I can see that I paid nothing. I did no work for the mallow. It grows wild, and it's very high in nutritional value from what I've read. I've also uh, read somewhere that it's uh, used for making a love potion. So, if you need some love, eat some mellow. It might bring some love into your life. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Mmm. Delicious. I'm going to walk this down and just check out if there's anything in the glass house. So I can finish off with the strawberry maybe if I'm lucky. It's starting to rain, eh? 
I ate the whole lot. There'll be no soup tomorrow. It was so bloody good. I want to show you this. This is a trek. I bought this in Richmond at the bike shop there. And this bike actually belonged to the bloke that, you know the Tour de France? And they have that guy filming it? Well, that guy, that was his bike when he used to come to New Zealand. He used to stay here. And he brought it with him. And it's done the Tour de France five times, but only in the back of his vehicle. He's never actually cycled it. So I lent that to a uh, young bloke, Joel, Joel Compton, good bastard. He's a possumer, he does professional trapping, he just does everything, he works hard. And I said, hey mate, just take it for as long as you need, because he wanted to do some fitness training and he's had it for quite a while. He returned it today because I needed it back because I want to let young Papa Joe use it so he can cycle with me. And look at this, mate. Top shelf, good bastard, I fucking love salmon, I love it. Thank you Joel, I didn't expect that mate. I didn't lend you the bike to get something back, but hey, never look a gift horse in the mouth. So before we wrap up this video, let's go and see if there's any strawberries in the glass house, because there were some a couple of days ago. There was one big one, and there were some small ones, and so long as uh, Papa Joe hasn't been out there picking them, which I don't think he has, because I haven't seen him in the glass house for a few days, uh, we might get lucky and find something out there. Got a lid on the worm farm now because we've had rain. Oh, look at that. Holy shit. That's all worm juice, look at that. That's all black worm juice. Holy shit. There was a strawberry there, but it's gone. Birds might have got it. Flowers, so they're still growing. Yeah. One here. The wasabi got smashed by the wind. Look at it, it got smashed. You are right, mate? Just all sort of folded over. Any strawberries? I think there is. Got a few little tomatoes. Oh, no, it's gone. Bugger. Oh, well, these have died. Gone all dry. Well, hold on, there we go. Sweet as, bro. It's a bit soft. No, that'll do. That'll work. Oh, technically, we've actually got dessert. Mmm. Not bad chomping. Mmm. That was dinner today for under five bucks. Give it a go. And make suggestions below for meals that you know that you can get that have high nutrition that are under five bucks. And I'll cook one. There's all sorts of things you can find in the shops. Ideally something with protein. No vegetarians or vegans around here. Having said that, I don't mind making a vegetarian meal. Be good, can't be good, be careful. We'll see you next video. See you later. Time to walk dogs. Ladies. Ducky. You guys want to walk? Hey, you want to walk? Yeah, good boy, aren't you? Yeah, you good dog. Yeah, you stay tied up, mate, you're naughty. Good boy, bro. Way on down south. Well, my mama. Hey, she told me. Son, life will be hard Take care of yourself My daddy said now Don't be uptight Stand on your own two feet And learn, learn how to fight I was born Way down in a country Keep it solid, bro. Keep it solid.